The Chris Titus tool is a tool that I've featured many times on my channel. It's a great tool for debloating windows, disabling telemetry and features, and you can also install software and dependencies through it as well. It's a great all-in-one tool and it's an essential that I install on pretty much every new installation of Windows that I do. But now it's got even better. There's actually a new feature built into it where you can actually make your own debloated custom Windows ISO. So in today's video, we're going to be checking out for ourselves as well as exploring the new features of the tool. As always, big shout out to Chris Titus. I'll leave all his links in the description and yeah, let's get into it. All right, guys. So to use the new Chris Titus tool, we need to go ahead and open up our PowerShell as administrator. So just right click on PowerShell, run as administrator, and this should open up. Next up, you want to type in this command. You can copy and paste it from Chris Titus's website right here. And yeah, just go ahead and press enter and press yes to this message that should come up and boom. So yeah, here we go. Here is the brand new Chris Titus tool. It's had a complete redesign. It looks really nice. So yeah, the first thing you're greeted with is the install section. So pretty much you can tick all these boxes here of the apps that you want to install and you can basically just press install selection and it will install them. So there's so many to choose from. We've got web browsers, communication, development stuff, documents. We've even got games so you can install Steam and Prism Launcher through here as well, which is pretty cool. We've got some Microsoft tools, Net Desktop Runtime, Multimedia tools, Pro Tools and some utilities like 7-Zip, Rufus. Now I'm just looking through here and I can't seem to find a good password manager. Well, that's okay because our sponsor NordPass has got you covered. Today's video is brought to you by NordPass, the secure password manager for businesses. If you guys out there are struggling to keep track of all your passwords, then NordPass has you covered. Nowadays, if you're doing anything online, it's pretty much essential that you've got to have an online account for it. Now, if you spend a lot of time online like me, then you will have multiple online accounts, which are really difficult to remember all the passwords for and keep track of. It seems like every day now you hear about data breaches where accounts get compromised, passwords get stolen, Stolen, and it's really scary stuff. The number one reason most accounts get compromised are due to weak passwords and using the same password for everything, which let's be honest, we've all done once in our life. However, this is where NordPass comes in to simplify your digital life. NordPass is like your digital password vault, which you can carry with you wherever you go. It securely stores all your passwords in it and it works across multiple devices wherever you are in the world. NordPass doesn't just secure your passwords, it can also help you generate really really strong and robust passwords when you're signing up for new online accounts. And NordPass even goes the extra mile with a password health checker, which tells you if your passwords are weak, reused or old, which is an absolute game changer and can really help keep your business safe. If you're ready to take back control of your passwords, then check out NordPass. I'll leave a link to them in the description down below. And if you use the code NOTREDAN, you can get a three month free trial to decide whether it's good for your business. Thank you to NordPass for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. So yeah, there's lots of stuff in here and in the new version, you can actually press Control and F and you can type in what you want. So before it was very difficult, you had to scroll through this list and try and find which one you wanted and tick the box. Whereas now you can just type in this search box, find what you want to install and press install. Easy. You can also upgrade your apps through here as well. So if there's updates available, you just press this button, upgrade all, make sure they're obviously selected and it will update them for you. Really good. You can also uninstall them through here as well. Now let's get into the main part of this tool, which is the tweak section. So if I go into my task manager here and go into the performance tab here, as you can see, I've got 160 background processes on my computer. Now I haven't de-bloated this computer. This is just like my main computer. I've got all my stuff on here, but we're gonna de-bloat it. I'm gonna show you guys this magic and I'm gonna show you how I pretty much half these background processes. So running the Chris Titus tool, I'm I'm going to go with the recommended desktop selection as you can see here it just ticks all these boxes in the essential tweaks but you can also do stuff like delete temporary files and run disk cleanup but it'll just take a little bit longer to do you can add and activate the ultimate performance profile which i'm going to go ahead and do as well there are some advanced tweaks as well here not recommended to touch them if you don't know what you're doing you can remove microsoft edge which might sound like it's good but it does break stuff so it's probably not recommended but you can go ahead and remove onedrive and select the classic right click menu and you can also disable notification tray 
gray and stuff like that so you can enable the dark theme through here you can turn off bing search in the start menu which is good you can also disable mouse acceleration which is great if you're a gamer and yeah that's pretty much the tweak section i'm gonna go ahead and press this button here which is run tweaks and yeah i'll show you guys my new background processes after i've run this so yeah and there you go before you know it tweaks are finished and we're all good so after that it's recommended to restart your computer which i'm going to go ahead and do now and i'll show you my task manager once we've restarted all right guys so i've just restarted my computer now let's go ahead and open up the task manager and see our performance tab and as you can see we're now on just a hundred processes so that's cut down about 60 processes which is really good now bear in mind this is my main computer so i've got my recording software open my mic software so that's obviously adding to our background processes but yeah look at that that is crazy that has really cut down our processes and on a low-end pc this will really make a difference on this pc probably not so much because we've got a ryzen 9 12 core processor and 32 gigs of ram but if you're on a low-end system then the chris titus tool will definitely help you out if we go into the control panel here and just search for power options as you can see in our additional plans we now have ultimate performance which i'm going to go ahead and select here so this provides the ultimate performance on higher end pcs so definitely a good setting to have if you've got a good pc out there or a mid-range pc that you just want to get as much performance out of as possible all right so we're back on the chris titus tool let's check out the config tab so the config tab has some pretty cool stuff in so we've got legacy windows panels so we just click on these these are basically just shortcuts basically to all the old school windows panels which are pretty well hidden now in newer versions of windows 11 which is a little bit annoying but they're all here under legacy windows panels we've got features as well here which we can install so net framework hyper v legacy media and windows subsystem for linux and we've also got some fixes as well here so we can actually get winget now in later versions of windows 11 for some reason they've removed it but you can reinstall it through the chris titus tool simply by just pressing this you can also set up auto login reset windows update reset network and you can also scan for system corruption we've also got updates as well here which is a very good setting to have so this won't work in windows 11 home but in windows 11 professional or windows 10 professional you can actually put your windows updates on security which is recommended so by default windows is on this setting default out of the box setting so this basically means that every time there's a new windows update you will get it come through in your windows update it'll randomly install itself one day and then before you know it your computer's restarting and you've got a new version of windows now if you've debloated your windows and optimized it a new windows update will probably reverse all of that and it's super annoying but in the chris titus tool you can actually select security updates which are the recommended so what this means it says actually right here it will delay feature updates by two years and will install security updates four days after the release so this is really good at keeping your system up to date there are always vulnerabilities being found in windows so you'll get all of the updates straight from Microsoft through here, but you won't get feature updates, which is super good. So all your optimized windows and all your deep bloating won't be changed. And if you really want to, there's the ability to disable all updates by pressing here. However, it's not recommended. So one of the brand new features in this new version of Chris Titus tool is called MicroWin. It's a brand new tab that's been added up here. MicroWin basically allows you to make your own custom Windows ISO through the Chris Titus tool. So MicroWin can remove telemetry and tracking, add local accounts, remove the Wi-Fi requirement to finish the install, add the ability to remove Edge, Defender, Teams, and also de-bloat Windows apps. So the first thing that you need to do to use MicroWin is you actually need to go ahead and download a Windows 11 ISO. I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can download it directly from Microsoft servers. And then all you need to do is just select your Windows ISO. So I'm gonna go ahead and find mine, which is here, Windows 11 23H2. Now it will take a little while just to load up into the tool. So just leave it, don't press anything, and I'll be back once it's doing something. All right, okay, here we go. So that actually loaded up pretty quickly. So you can choose, I'm gonna go ahead and select Windows 11 Pro, because that's the version that I like to use. You can choose what Windows features that you want to remove from the ISO. So you can keep Edge and keep Defender, but you have the ability to remove them as well. So if you really don't like Edge, then you can go ahead 
and remove it straight through here as well. You can also keep Apex packages and keep provision packages as well. You can also go ahead and install drivers through here as well, but it says here I know what I'm doing. So I'm probably just going to leave that because I don't know what I'm doing. But basically what it says here is you just pretty much just put the path to the unpacked drivers, all the sys and int files for the devices that need drivers. You just insert that in here, tick this box and you're good to go. And you can also copy this to Ventoy as well. So you don't even need to make the ISO and use Rufus or something to burn it to a USB. You can actually copy it straight to Ventoy through here as well. But I'm going to go ahead and just save the ISO as it is and then we'll use Rufus later to put it on our USB. And yeah, I'm going to be really excited to see what this OS looks like. We're basically building our own custom Windows OS right here. So let's see how it goes. All right, guys. So it took a little while, but we are finally done. Our ISO has been made. So to go ahead and find it, you basically just press Windows key R, type in app data. It's pretty much just like finding your .minecraft folder. But yeah, you just go into local here and then go down to, I believe it's temp and scroll down. And yep, as you can see here, here is our micro win ISO image. So yeah, you can go ahead and put this on a USB using Rufus, or you can use Ventoy if you know what you're doing, but I'm going to go ahead and burn this ISO to a USB and get it installed. So yeah, just look at this. Look at the file size difference. So this is a standard Windows 11 ISO. It's 6.24 gigabytes on disk, and this is our MicroWin ISO, which is 5.3 gigabytes. So yeah, significant reduction there in file size. Lots of unnecessary stuff cut out. So yeah, let's try this out. All right, so here we are on our new new Windows 11 install that we've made. So it looks very minimal so far. It's just, you know, standard Windows 11, nothing on the desktop. Let's have a look at our start menu. Wow, look at that. There's nothing pinned to our start menu whatsoever. If we go into all apps, then yeah, we have got some of the pre-installed Microsoft stuff, which isn't too great, I suppose, but you can just right click and uninstall them simply just like that. We've got search indexing, which is a little bit annoying. And I guess we might as well have a look at our task manager while we're here. Let's have a look, as you can see, 133, what? This isn't as de-bloated as I might have thought, but it's okay. We can run the Chris Titus tool and get this all back to how we should have it. And yeah, I mean, I'm pretty disappointed really by these apps here. So as you guys can see from my face, it's quite clear that I was very disappointed when I looked at the background processes of this operating system. It was pretty gutting the amount of time that it took to build this ISO, the amount of time it took to install. I was very close to scrapping this video. What was the point of promoting this tool if all it's gonna do is basically just provide me with a Windows 11 standard install with all the pinned apps of the start menu removed. But then I realized something. Lots of people don't trust custom operating systems out there and they'd much rather build them themselves. And this operating system is a great base for all of that. So what I decided to do was go ahead and install Firefox, my web browser of choice. And I got running the Chris Titus tool and applying all of his tweaks that we covered earlier in the video. I set out to make this as minimal as possible and to only install the bare essentials and do as many tweaks as possible. I wanted this to be a super clean operating system. So after I run the Chris Titus tool and restarted my computer, this is what I was greeted with. Let's have a look at our task manager. So, wow, 74 background processes. That is just, that is crazy. Honestly, that has really taken our windows to the next level. So we've got no more Bing in the search menu either. Our notifications are disabled by default as well. Nothing really in our tray. And if we go into our all apps here, we've still got this Microsoft stuff, but you can simply just right click uninstall and it goes away pretty quickly. But yeah, they don't make much difference like the background processes or anything like that. They're all pretty much just here. They're pretty much just Apex files. So yeah, just uninstalling them. You can even uninstall Katana as well, even better. So yeah, that is pretty much our cleaned up perfect Windows 11 install. Thanks to Chris Titus's tool and his Chris Titus Windows ISO builder, we've now got a pretty clean Windows 11 experience, which we can now go ahead and install stuff on, start gaming on. And yeah, it's super clean, really nice. And it's a really good alternative for people out there that don't trust custom operating systems or playbooks, AME Wizards, any of that. And yeah, let's go ahead and try out some gaming benchmarks on here. To do some benchmarks, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running Minecraft 1.8.9 
vanilla with no mods or anything like that. As you can see, these are the video settings that I'm going to be using. And basically what I've done, something a little bit different this time in this video, I've actually learned how to benchmark games properly. So what I've done is I've basically loaded up this exact same world on both the de-bloated version of Windows and the standard version of Windows. And I've run around the map exactly like I'm doing right now in the exact same manner. Now, if you're wondering what texture pack I'm using, I'm actually using a new texture pack that I've made called Lightning 16X, which is like a red and gold theme pack. It's kind of like the flash, as you can see here on the diamond armor. I think it looks really good. So if you want this pack, I'll leave a link to my texture pack channel down in the description down below. Make sure to go check it out and drop that a sub if you're into Minecraft texture packs. It's available for 1.8.9, 1.20 and Bedrock Edition coming very soon. And yeah, it just feels good to be making packs again. And I'm actually enjoying pack making again for once. But unfortunately, that kind of content is not what I do on this channel anymore. So I've moved it all over there. So yeah, definitely check out that channel. And if you want this texture pack, then it will be on there. All right, so let's get into the benchmarks. So how did the de-bloated version of Windows 11 compare to the stock Windows 11? version. So I've used Capframe X to get some really good accurate statistics for Minecraft 1.8.9. So as you can see on your screen here, our average FPS on a de-bloated version of Windows was 125.8 compared to the stock Windows at only 106.2 average FPS. We've also got 1 percentile FPS and 0.2 percent percentile FPS. These are just like the lowest the FPS possibly was during the time of testing. And yeah, as you guys can see here, the de-bloated Windows does beat out the stock Windows. So it definitely pays to use the Chris Titus tool on a stock version of Windows 11 and get so much more performance out of it. Look at this. I've also got some frame time MS that I'll throw on screen right now. So I did the test for about 20 seconds, just running around in the exact same manner as I showed you. And yeah, this is basically all of the nice statistics. We've got all of the frame times, uh, de-bloated versus stock windows. You guys can see a nice graph here. And we've also got the percentiles percent up here as well. So yeah, it's looking pretty good for the de-bloated windows right now. Like I said before, we're running on integrated graphics. So we're running on Intel HD graphics 4600 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 4460 i5. 1.8.9, completely vanilla, no mods or anything like that. No texture pack either. I use the default packs. And yeah, here is the consecutive frame rate values if you guys are interested in that. And if you guys want to see some benchmarks on other games out there, then definitely let me know in the comments section and the most popular one I will do. So that's pretty much the video guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Leave a like if you found this helpful and check out Chris Titus's tool in the description. I've also got merch now as you guys can see. Notre Dame t-shirts. Make sure to go get one. And if you want to check out my last video where I compared Atlas OS to Rev iOS and Tiny11 then click here and I'll see you guys there.